Hey friends, Dr. Elizabeth Johnson Million back again with another hopefully helpful video for you. This time all about applying for the NAVLI. I'm going to basically go through the process with you. It's going to be a voiceover style video. I'm going to have um, some very important websites, links for you guys to pay close attention to if you are in the process of applying for your test. We'll talk about how you schedule your test, what that's like, and then once you get your passing NAVLI scores, what's next? What do you kind of need to do for in terms of, of next steps uh, beyond that? So excited to, to chat with you guys. Let's get started. All right, friends, I'm going to move pretty quickly through all this information. So um, hopefully you can, can keep up. This is the ICVA homepage, which is just icva.net. This is what you'll see if you, you type that into your browser. We have a number of different important tabs here. COVID-19 info, obviously that's a, a new tab for 2020. So this takes you to our news and updates page if you wanna make sure that um, any information that you're looking for is sort of the, the latest and greatest, that's where you'll go. And we have assessments, state and provincial licensing boards, and the FAQ. For the purpose of this video, those three things right there are uh, the most important thing that we're going to be discussing today. All right, so assessments, then you can go down to NAVLI, then State and Provincial Licensing Boards and FAQ. So let's go to the NAVLI page. So you float over assessments, then click on NAVLI. This is everything you'll need to know about the NAVLI, most likely, at least about um, applying for or preparing for the exam. If you can't find it here, go to the FAQ page. All sorts of really good, if I click here, we have it broken down into different categories. Everything you could ever want to know about uh, the, the NAVLI and the application scheduling examination process is here. But let's go back to the NAVLI. So this is where you'll see the current or upcoming testing windows. We have this really nicely um, six step process to kind of show you, you know, you're going to apply, you're going to um, submit the two different separate parts of the application. So there can actually be two applications that are separate or two parts to one application, which I'll talk about in a second. Then we'll talk about the scheduling and admission permit, scheduling your uh, appointment, taking the test, and then getting your scores. And then if you keep scrolling, make sure you go down to the entire part of the page, you'll see this huge menu of drop-down menu, a dropped, huge selection of drop-down menus. So every one of these expands, which is really, really nice. So it'll show you, are you an eligible candidate to take the NAVLI? What does that mean? Then the NAVLI application process, all of the, the different parts that you might have questions about there, scheduling and admission. Those of you who think that you might need testing accommodations for the NAVLI, this is a very important thing for you because, especially for those of you, um, I'm, I'm speaking to those um, who are um, planning to get licensed in the U.S., we have our NAVLI accommodations request process packet right here. So this is updated. Check that out. That's a, a link that will take you to the PDF packet to um, be uh, considered for accommodations. Then we have information about the National Examining Board for the Canadian um, application for getting accommodations. So important for those of you, again, who think that you might need accommodations, go ahead and, and look for that. An important note is that, the, that this packet is due the same deadline as the NAVLI applications, same deadline for the, the same testing windows. So make sure you pay, pay attention to the deadlines and get everything needed to submit for that. And then again, if we keep scrolling, Real quickly, this is a NAVLI subject matter, um, two resources that I think are extremely important. We have a diagnoses um, PDF here, this, this awesome list of every species that is covered here, and then all the different diagnoses that you could potentially see or be tested on, at least on the NAVLI, for these, um, for these species. So you guys, if it's on the NAVLI, it's going to be on these lists. If it is on the NAVLI, it is gonna be on these lists. So this should be the foundation of your preparation right here. Nothing is gonna substitute using these lists. Nothing will. So there you go. Then if we go to the competencies, I think these feel a lot like learning objectives. If you guys are familiar with those, we have these competency domains, which it's, it's gonna look like just a bunch of lists. But if we scroll through, okay, data gathering and interpretation, what does that mean? What do I need to know for that part, for that competency of the NAVLI? You need to be able to interpret, to interpret all these different findings, interpret findings from a physical exam, from um, diagnostic imaging, from other tests. 
I mean, literally we have it all broken down. So if you take this, the, these competency domains and plug them into the diagnoses um, and species list and, and fill that out and commit that and, and learn to use that in your clinical reasoning, you are gonna be all set for this exam. So an Abley page, here we go. I'm gonna quickly go through the application process with you, um, just with a, a little uh, fake account, just so you guys know what to expect. But if you click that Navly application link, this is where you're gonna come. Before we dive into that, I wanna take a second and make sure that you guys are aware of, of this part, which is important. You need to have selected a state that will approve your eligibility. So that is where your NAVLI scores will be sent. And for the purpose of becoming approved to take the NAVLI, if you're an eligible candidate, you have to pick one state, one state and one state only, specifically for those of you who are planning to get licensed in the US, one state. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hey, I want to become licensed in more than one state, or I don't know which state I'm gonna you know, end up in. I don't know where I wanna become licensed. I don't know where I wanna work yet. Maybe you're gonna go through the match or you don't know where you're gonna get a job. That's okay, that's fine. But again, for the purpose of taking the NAVLI, you're gonna pick one state. And then after you pass the NAVLI, then you can transfer your scores to other states. Whatever the, whatever the case may be, it's no problem at all. You'll, you'll do that through the AAVSB, which we'll talk about. But I wanna make sure that you guys are, are paying attention before you start the application process that you look and see what state do you want to become approved through. So let's look at that state and provincial licensing board. So that's right here, state and provincial licensing board page on our website. And this is specifically speaking to what state, again, you are going to apply for approval and eligibility um, in order to take the NAVLI. So if you look at this map, we have it uh, separated into two different colors. The, the green states, there are 34 of them, green states. Then there are, uh, uh, I think this says that they are blue. I think they look more gray, but we'll call them blue. That's fine. Then there are uh, blue states as well. But the green states, there are 34. Those state regulatory boards have basically um, chosen, so selected the ICVA to process their NAVLI approvals on their behalf, which means that you're going to submit everything to the ICVA to be approved through that state. We, we will handle it, okay? So you're basically going to submit those, the, the ICVA NAVLI application and then the state and provincial licensing board application for approval both to the ICVA and like one big application and one big fee transaction, okay? So that's all in one. Now, if you're looking at this map and maybe you wanna go through um, California or Washington, Louisiana, Tennessee, Massachusetts, if you wanna go through one of these blue states or gray states, that's great too. That just means that in order to get approval for those states, you have to go through those state boards directly. You have to submit a separate application to those state boards or through a third party, third party service that those states have designated to process the approvals. So for example, Illinois has the Continental Testing Service process their approvals, so make sure you check that out. California actually goes through what's called a VEER program on the AAVSV website. We'll make sure to include the link below this video for that. And then the rest of the states, generally speaking, you'll go through their state board. So make sure that you uh, have a chance to look at this. You can, you know, drop down through these different states here and it'll show you, for example, I'm from uh, Tennessee. So I'll say, okay, Tennessee Health Related Boards. So if I go to this website, that will tell me what I need to do and how I need to submit my application. So there is that. Let's go back to the application page. So, okay, we're back to the ICVA application page. So if you just go to assessments NAVLI and then I click apply for NAVLI, you'll be here. On the left side of this page, this shows you everything that is that is asked on this application. This is not anything to be scared of. It's, it's actually fairly straightforward. Make sure you read through all of this. This shows you the deadlines for the testing windows. This shows you the fees. We try to make sure that all of this is right here in front of you before you actually start the, the application. And then uh, you also need to make sure that you have a Visa or MasterCard available to pay for your fees whenever you're submitting your application. That is due at the time of submitting your application. You have to do it completely. So let's get started. 
So the only testing window right now that's available that this this individual would want to take is the the one that's upcoming. So September to December uh, de uh, um, application window. Then okay, so we want to make sure that I'm using my name with correct capitalization, no all caps. Um, spell my name exactly as, as it appears on the identification I plan to present at the testing center. This is an important thing to remember, guys, is that the name that you put in this application needs to match the identification, like a government issued ID, a driver's license, a passport, et cetera. That needs to be the exact same name on this application as what's on your ID, all right? So we'll say that this is Jane Doe. Very good, that's what the Jane Doe's government issued ID says. And then we say, if you have been known by any other name, you must enter that name below. Oh, oh, this is helpful. Let's just say, for the sake of this exercise, that Jane Doe um, is married and she changed her name. So we'll say that Jane used to be Smith. So um, again, if you have been married or uh, if you've changed your name for any reason, maybe your school has your name um, as one thing and you go by another or your, your ID says another, this is an important thing that we have every possible, you know, the, the other name that you could have gone by. Jane is a female. We'll say Jane was born on January 1st, 97. Why not? Jane has not taken the NAPLI before. So that's step one. Check, check. Awesome job. So Jane lives at, again, I'm from Tennessee, so we'll do a fun little uh, fake address there. In Knoxville. You're going to pick your state for your address in the USA. Zip code. Jane, Jane Smith Doe at gmail.com. And we'll do a uh, pretend phone number here, just picking out numbers here, but you guys will put your uh, best phone number, email address, everything that you check regularly. Don't put some obscure email address that you don't, that you don't check too often. And make sure you feel, you fill both of these um, telephone lines here. Check here if you would like to receive important notifications via text. Messaging fees may apply. Yes, I love text message updates. By checking here, you can send to the ICVA contacting you by email, telephone, or text regarding surveys to get feedback to the ICVA. Sure, surveys sound good. So if we look back up here, we're almost done with the, the next section. Awesome. All right. So we got the full name and the contact information done. Check, check. So the ICBA is no longer collecting US social security numbers for the purpose of identity. Um, I do have a social security number, so I do not need to, uh, Jane Doe does not need to click that, so we can move on. But if you do not have a US social security number, you'll click that and it will give you um, some important details as to what you need to include, like a national ID number. Moving on, those of you who have a documented disability, if you click this, that will automatically send an email to you with our packet that NAVLI candidates for disabilities, you'll receive that via email. So if you didn't download it before, you'll get it via email if you click this. Uh, the degree, so Jane Doe is graduating in May, 2021. Jane Doe goes to the University of Tennessee. And then this part, this is totally optional. This is just I uh, consent to having the ICVA report my NAVLI score to the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs at my veterinary school. If I don't pass the exam, they'll include a copy of my diagnostic score report. Again, this is optional. A lot of schools really, really appreciate having this information if you feel comfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Jane Doe will share that information uh, for, again, you're, you're under no obligation to agree to this consent. This is not required. We don't, we don't automatically send it to them, but um, schools do appreciate it just, just for uh, data. So check that out. Then um, agency for application. So again, this is that, that state, a state uh, licensing board piece where you are going to have a state in mind for where you want to approve, where you want to seek approval through. Who do you want to get your scores once you, um, once you take the NAPLI and get your scores back? 
just for the sake of this exercise, we're gonna say that Jane Doe is going to become licensed in Georgia. Georgia is one of the 34 states that the ICBA handles the approvals for. So Georgia State Board of Veterinary Medicine. And then we say, okay, we got that. To be eligible for the NAVLI, you must fall within one of the following categories. So senior student at one of the following AVMA accredited vet schools, there's that. Senior student at another AVMA accredited vet school, there's that. Graduate of an AVMA accredited vet school, um, do, 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 okay. So I am going to say for the sake of this exercise that Jane Doe is a senior student at one of the following AVMA schools at the University of Tennessee. So we'll say that. But if you follow, follow any of these other categories, if you're a graduate, so if you've already graduated and you're taking the NAVLI, there's that. If you go to a different school, maybe one of these schools that are um, largely overseas or in um, Canada, check that out. Uh, or if you're in, enrolled in one of these programs, you'll check that. So. Jane Doe is a senior student. That's what we're gonna go with. And then we get to the last part. So this is the, the fees I was telling you guys about. I understand the fee at this point is $690. I agree to abide by the terms and conditions. Make sure you look at that. You must agree to the following statement. Certify that I'm taking the NAVLI for the purpose of being licensed in Georgia. Yep. And authorize the release of examination scores to the Georgia State Examining Board. So I know that Georgia is going to have additional requirements for licensure. That passage of the NAVLI does not guarantee licensure. So that just means that just because I take and pass the NAVLI and just because I've selected Georgia here does not mean that my job is done. Once I pass the NAVLI, once Jane Doe passes the NAVLI, then you have to go and look at the Georgia State Veterinary Board website or whatever Veterinary State Board website where you are having your score sent to or wherever you want to become licensed and you have to fulfill all the other requirements of that state to become licensed. So that might look like additional applications, documentation, maybe a criminal background check, maybe fees, maybe even a state jurisprudence exam. All of that is state dependent, but that's just, this is, that's what this is saying. Um, there are additional requirements. I hereby certify that all the information on this application is truthful and correct to the best of my knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. So I understand that the fee is 690. Yep, I knew that. And because I am going through one of the 34 states that ICBA handles the approvals for, every one of those 34 states has a state application fee of $55. So I get that. Next. Yes, my name is Jane Doe. Yep, yep. So this is, again, just, just confirming that the um, spelling of Jane Doe matches the name on the unexpired government-issued ID. So again, we got to make sure that you have that. Candidates who not, who's Candidates whose NAVLI schedule and admission permit name does not match their ID will not be allowed to take the NAVLI. So very, very important that you pay close attention to your ID and the name on your ID and make sure it's not expired. Then we say, where do I want to take the NAVLI? Uh, I'm going to take the NAVLI in the United States. That's all you have to choose. You can choose one of these other states if you'd like. But if you are taking the NAVLI in the US and Canada, there are no additional fees. However, if you're taking it outside of the US and Canada, the fee is $330. So be mindful of that. So I'm taking it in the US. And then here's all the information. Yep, all that looks good. Then you would make a secure payment and bada bing, bada boom, you would be done. You would get an email, bam, there it is. So my total was $745. They have all my information. My um, address is filled in there, a little security capture code. That is it. That is how you apply for the NAVLI. I hope that that is somewhat helpful. So we will go back to the home page just in case we need to reference that. Okay, so you've applied for the NAVLI. Then once you get that submitted with your fees, you're gonna receive a confirmation email with this document attached. This is called the Bulletin of Information. We update this, so this was last updated in 2020, so this is the, the best, most recent information. Everything you guys could ever want to know about the NAVLI is in this document. This is so, so helpful. It's available on our website, so you can look at it anytime. I just wanna make sure that you are aware that this is a very, very, very helpful document uh, just to kind of get you ready for either applying for the NAVLI, taking the NAVLI, all these other little nuanced questions you might have, it's available. Then once you have everything submitted and you receive your confirmation email, 
in the days and weeks after you've submitted your application, you should receive an approval email. Again, if you're going to go through one of those gray or blue states, you'll have to submit the separate application to that state board or that third party for approval. Then they'll notify us that you're approved. But you'll expect to get another email from us saying, congratulations, you're approved to take the NAVLI. Now, at that point, you wait again for the scheduling permit. So what is a scheduling permit? This is just an example uh, of what that would look like, a sample admission permit. Once you receive this in your email, then you can go and schedule your test, okay? So this will probably take a few weeks, maybe even a month or two to receive this because you have to process all of those applications and get everything uploaded and ready to go. Once you receive this admission permit, you're gonna have I'm an ID number in here that will allow you to go on and schedule a test date. So this gives you the the step by step um, guide here. You're going to use this information above, schedule a test date via ProMetric. You can you can confirm, reschedule, or cancel your appointment. This talks about the test day, test center. So this is the uh, the sample scheduling permit for you guys. <clears throat> and then if you go to Hang on. If you go to the ICVA page with Prometric, which is just Prometric.com, uh -oh, Prometric.com slash ICVA, it brings you to this page. Boom. So if you go here, this will, if you play around on this, even if you don't have your scheduling permit, you can say, okay, I want to locate all the different testing centers that will test the NAVLI. So I'm going to say that I'm going to take the NAVLI back in Tennessee because that's where I'm in school, where Jane Doe is in school, right? It's thinking, it's thinking. I'm going to take the uh, exam. You can also take it, there's an op the option to take it in French, but you'll, you'll have to go through the, the Canadian examining board for that option. But Jane Doe is taking it uh, in English. So then we're going to put a... Uh, local zip code in for Knoxville and look at that I got a couple of different options look like looks like there's a Prometric testing center in Knoxville that offers the NAVLI another one in Asheville which is a couple hours away so you guys can play around on this website and see okay what's the exact address um, are there more than one options that kind of thing so check that out if you want to learn more about the the Prometric testing centers and, and where this is available even if you don't have the testing center uh, the testing permit, you can um, play around with that. The next thing I want to show you guys is the American Association of Veterinary State Boards website. This is um, something that maybe you don't think that you need to become familiar with right now, but it will certainly help you. You can even set up an account right now, your My AAVSB website, if you're interested. But for the purpose of this video, I just want to show you real quickly um, what it looks like to, to transfer your scores, if that's what you want to do. So let's just say for the sake of this video that Jane Doe has applied to have her scores uh, sent to Georgia. That is the state that she applied for approval through. But at the last minute, she decided to accept a job in a different state. So what does she need to do first? Jane Doe will go here and then go to vault transfers. So this has a really awesome video, which vault service is right for me. Um, that basically they have different tiers of transfer service. They can hold on to all kinds of stuff, including your NAVLI scores, your school transcripts, license verifications, all kinds of stuff if you want them to, if you don't want to send it individually every time you move, if you think you'll be moving a lot. But this, this is me. So this is Jane Doe, Vault Transfers for First Time License Application Services. That would be this situation. We are transferring our score for the first time. So I got to make sure that I'm paying close attention to all these different parts here. Yep, I'm, I'm a first time licensed application for veterinarians. So I'm going to submit my application right here. So that's, that's pretty simple. You'll just set up an account and then you pay a $50 fee and your scores will be transferred from whatever state that they're in. Or, you know, basically you'll have a copy of your scores sent to whatever state you plan to, to become licensed in. So wherever, let's just say she wants to transfer her scores to Florida or Virginia or whatever the case may be. This is where you go. So that is the, the vault page. 
And then real quickly, I pulled this up. Let's just say that you wanted to get licensed in a state, one of those gray states on the NAVLI uh, State and Provincial Licensing Board uh, page here. So one of these gray states that does not go to the ICBA for approval. So Tennessee is one of those states. Again, I'm from, I'm from Tennessee originally, so I use it as an example fairly frequently because I, I know the process. But this is the Tennessee Department of Health website. So even if you didn't get, even if you're not even there, if I want to say, what is the Tennessee State Veterinary Board website? If I go there, Tennessee Board of Medical Examiners, and I click that, it takes you to this page, Tennessee Department of Health. So Board of Veterinary Medicine, okay. I'm interested in licensure for the state of Tennessee. Um, let's see here. Maybe let's go to application. So you can kind of click around. Oh, perfect. Okay, here we go. Applications, licensure, application and licensure to vet for veterinarians. So it says here that applying for initial licensure from your professional licensing board has become a bit easier. For the past year, the Department of Health has been working on an online application. So some states have started an online application process. Some states still require you to send it via snail mail, like as, as a paper application. But I can tell you that this is what the application looks like for the state licensing process um, in the state of Tennessee. So this tells you exactly what is required. You have to have passing NAVI scores right there. There's that. This gives you a nice little checklist. So again, you know, puts around on the uh, state um, licensing board websites to see what is required. You can contact them directly. Just be aware that you need to, to start becoming um, aware of what is required you know, sooner than later so that you can stay ahead of this and be ready whenever you want to get your job and start becoming a licensed veterinarian. So I hope all of this was helpful. Again, the homepage of our website is a good place to start. All sorts of good information here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off for now, but please feel free to contact us. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, mail at icva.net. There's our uh, primary email address, or you can contact me, um, emillion at icva.net as well for any additional questions. Thanks for following along.